again. Today we shall be talking about this continuous beam. And if you are new to this channel, please kindly hit the subscription button so that whenever we drop a video about anything structure or other civil engineering related uh, problem, um, you'll be the first to view it. Looking at this continuous beam, um, all we have to do uh, is to draw the free body diagram. Uh, we have a uh, three span. The first span has a point load at the center of the span. The second span has a UDL of 30 kN per meter. Whereas the last one has a 20 kN per meter. If you look at this dot here, it indicates that there is a hinge in this particular beam. And uh, it is here also. So um, we'll draw the free body diagram of this particular beam and uh, also give label to the support and other forces. Uh, this is a free body diagram. Um, at this point, there is a pin support. That's why we have a horizontal and vertical force. Um, this place is roller support. We have only vertical force. The same thing happens to this and uh, the last one as well. So we label here to be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Um, and the vertical force corresponding to point A, we we'll call it VA. That is vertical force at point A. We have vertical force at point C. We have vertical force at point E and vertical force at, at point G. First of all, before you solve this problem, you have to check the degree of uh, redundancy by using N is equals to R minus 3 minus A. Where R is the reaction, the number of reaction, and um, A is additional constant. In this particular beam, our additional constant is is 2. That is this hinge and this and this hinge. This particular sign here that looks like a full stop actually indicates that, that there is a hinge um, occurring here and there is a hinge at this particular point also. So we have two hinges. That is why our A is now 2. This our reaction, um, we have how many reactions here? We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have 5 reactions. So that is why our R is 5. Um, this is 3. And uh, this is 2 as well. That is the two hinges. So 5 minus 3 minus 2 will give us 0. Therefore, this structure is statically determinate. Now, let's go ahead to get the vertical reactions. Looking at this structure, um, you can't just take a summation of moment about the point. Uh, because if you say, let's take a summation of the moment about point A or point C, you, you will find out that you have so many unknowns. And uh, solving for the unknowns will be difficult for you so what do we do since we have hinge here we can say okay let's take a moment at point f to be equal to zero remember there's a difference between this particular m of of f and uh, there's a difference between that with this one uh, you know this particular one talks about summation of everything at that particular point whereas this m of f simply means moments at point f either from the right or from the left side so it must be either from one of the side so if we say let's take moment at point f our m of f is equals to zero therefore you're, you're only considering the forces to the right of this particular point f and that is only this udl and this vertical force um, so the distance of vg away from where you are taking your moment which is at point f is two meter so that is why you have two vg among the two vg will move in at a clockwise direction yes whereas this ud will move in a clockwise direction so uh, you can just say let the one that will move in a clockwise direction be equal to the one that will move in a clockwise direction that is why we have two vg is equals to 20 that is the magnitude of the udl multiplied by the span where you are working on which is just two meter then the two meter multiplied by two over two the two over two simply means that this udl will always act at the center so considering the point f and g the center will be at half the span which is two meter so that is two multiplied by one over two it's the same thing as two over two that is why we have 20 multiplied by two multiplied by two over two um 
and when you play around with that you're going to have that vg is equal to 20 kilo newton then again we take another moment at point d so moment at point d from the right hand side uh, it should be equal to zero remember i have explained the difference between this particular moment and this other one the other one is summation of all the moment whereas this one is moment from either of the sides okay so like we said before let the clockwise be equal to the anti-clockwise this vg and ve will move in anti-clockwise direction to this point d whereas the udl here and the other one will move in a clockwise direction therefore we have already gotten our vg to be 20 kilo newton and um, since it is 20 kilo newton you are going to multiply it with the distance which it will cover from the point where it is to where you are taking your moment and that distance is 2 meter plus 2 meter plus 2 meter which will give us 6 meter so that is why you have 20 multiplied by 6 then plus the VE which will also move in anti-clockwise direction so VE will cover a distance of 2 meter that is why you have 2 VE then it's equal to the ones that will move in a clockwise direction and we'll start with the magnitude of 20 kN per meter the 20 kN per meter will you know is acting at a span of 4 meter that is why we have 20 multiplied by 4 then always remember that UDL will always act at the center of the span so it will act at the center of the span and the center of the span uh, is half the total span which is a uh, 4 meter all over 2 which is 2 so 4 meter all over 2 which is 2 plus this other 2 meter because it will move from the center of this particular span to this particular place which is half of 4 meter plus this other 2 meter which will give us 4 so that's why we have uh, 20 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 4 again you have 30 kilo newton and uh, remember you are going to check the span at which it will add or it will add between this point D to point E that's why you have a uh, 30 multiplied by span the span which is 2 meter then multiply by the half where it's going to add which is 2 over 2 that's why we have 1 okay so you just play around with that and simplify it you end up having that VE is equal to 130 kilo newton now having gotten your VE and your VG you can now take a moment the summation of the whole moment at point A okay guys remember we are saying let clockwise turning forces be equal to anti-clockwise uh, this force VC, VE, and uh, VG will turn in a clockwise direction. Whereas 50 kN, 30 kN per meter, and 20 kN per meter will move in a clockwise direction. So VC, you know, VC is um, like 6 meters away from point A where you're taking your moment. That is why we have 6 VC. Uh, we have VE. The distance of VE from the point where you're taking your moment is 10. That's why we have 10 VE. And also we have VG, which is 14 meter away from point A. That's why we have 14 VG. Uh, to be equal to, um, we have uh, 20 kN per meter multiplied by the span, which is 4 meter. Then multiply by the distance, which it will move from this point to point A. Remember the distance is, remember the span is the mid span of this particular span, EG, which is 4 over 2 and that is 2 meter so you are going to check from the middle of this which is 2 meter to the point A uh, that is 12 meter that's why we have 20 multiplied by 4 which is a span so that you convert it from UDL to like a point load and uh, you multiply by the distance which is 12 meter then plus this 30 kN per meter will cover a distance of this particular point to this point so it's going to be 30 multiplied by the span which is 4 meter multiplied by the distance which is from the mid of mid of this span to this particular place that is 2 meter plus 3 meter plus 3 meter which will give us 8 meter then plus this point load which is 50 multiplied by 3 meter when you play around with all these values here you have that vc is equal to 81.67 kN. so having done all this uh, you see that we have our VC, we have our VE, and we have our VG. So we can just say let summation of the vertical forces be equal to zero. By so doing, you can say that let the upward force be equal to downward force. 
our VA, VC, VE, and VG are all upward forces, whereas 50, 30, and 20 are downward forces. That's why we have a VA plus a 1.67. I remember our VC is a 1.67. Then plus 130, um, which is our VE, plus our VG, which is which is 20, is equals to 50 plus this 120 120 was realized by multiplying 30 with a span which is four meter uh, you are multiplying because it's a UDR so you have to convert it to like a point load that is why you multiplied and so that the meter will cancel this meter and you have kilonewton left that is why you have 30 multiplied by 4 also the last one you do the same thing 20 multiplied by 4 that's why you have 80 so um, when you play along with this you have that VA is equal to 18.33 now we shall be drawing the shear force and bending moment diagram of this particular beam in the part two of this video so if you really don't want to miss this video kindly subscribe to this youtube channel and if you have a question don't hesitate to drop it in the comment section and um, bye for now